So this is uh, kind of trying to set, a, set the stage here a little bit with our NowCast uh, situational awareness uh, uh, capabilities and what we're sort of looking ahead toward the future here with this rapidly updating analysis, which really you can think of quickly as a 3D extension from RTMA. Uh, uh, several people here have helped from our end, but especially Trevor Alcott and Craig Hartsaw, who's sitting here with me right now. I want to take a minute. Obviously, our EMC folks are really critical and really have uh, collaborated in thinking about this uh, with the RTMA, but then also with the RUA in the future with uh, Jeff, who's going to talk next, and Steve Levine, and Jacob Carley, who's really behind the scene in a lot of this stuff. Uh, you guys in the regions are really key partners. We had this workshop we'll mention again later on about how is we started in the RUA to have participation from you all in uh, evaluating and uh, really kind of in the development stage. Uh, three of the key centers you know, would have a key role in this also. MDL uh, was there, the National Water Center, you know, at least three key labs from uh, OAR, ourselves, NSSL, and GLURL. Uh, kind of from a water system uh, point of view. NCAR participated in JCSDA as well. So this is my only time to kind of call out each of uh, these organizations and you all, but uh, I guess what takes place won't take place uh, without participation from you all and these other partners here. So uh, I've now pushed the advance button, and as I discovered before, it's a little bit slow on the trigger in this first slide, but we'll get there in a second. Uh, we do have this situation. We have lots of incomplete observational data sets out of which we uh, wish to put them together in kind of a new era in being able to do so. And I'm hoping this uh, switchover will take place in a minute. We have obviously data sets, especially from radar and satellite, uh, that are kind of uh, bringing, uh, being brought to bear in the uh, rapidly updating analysis. The RTMA, as you all know, is largely uh, you know, what we're hoping is not too bad a background field in, uh, uh, from model forecast and downscaling to the high resolution terrain, then bringing in the surface observation. So this is really can be thought as an extension of that. There has been uh, a kind of a sky cover uh, effort, but sort of from satellite only so far in uh, the uh, RTMA. So this is really looking beyond that. And now I'm a little bit perplexed here. And I'll push the uh, advance button here one more time. And I'm sure it's going to really jump right into the state. What I might do here, uh, and this was part of the issue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit an escape so that I can get to the next slide here and not uh, take too much longer. And let's see if it will allow me to do that. Uh, let's try this down here. Oh, there we go. This is what I need to do from now on. This is just an example here of radar data from MRMS, uh, uh, which we have a, a, an awesome data set. And actually, the MRMS has, has enabled the HER, as will come up later on here. But we have these gaps uh, in the radar tilt here. We have gaps pretty much in every kind of uh, the data sets that we have that we'd like to use in a situational awareness analysis. So for instance, this is actually analysis that my colleague Steve Wygant just pulled off this morning looking at the 0Z HER uh, and how it actually is able to take a model background field, use the very latest 3D radar data uh, to draw to that uh, and then to be able to uh, add to that the information from the model background also using the satellite information so that there is uh, fidelity with the satellite information. So this is kind of the, the problem that we might have here and then the opportunity to be able to put more information together toward the uh, RUA. So in general, uh, we might have three purposes for this high frequency uh, environmental analyses. We want to know the situational awareness uh, and use all observations possible. This is really what's behind the RTMA, of course. Uh, it's possible to actually use that as initial conditions for an extrapolation model. And so uh, auto nowcast or CWIS are two possibilities, and I think that our MRMS folks have been looking into this some already, and maybe uh, they will talk about that later in this 90-minute period. And then also initial conditions for a hydrodynamic model, like the HER. But I, we want to point out here that you don't really have to have uh, some of the uh, balance issues to be able to achieve number one or number two here. And so we really think of this as kind of a, a higher duty requirement here, but we can actually do something in a pure situational awareness toward the RUA. 
Uh, so, uh, the, the changing background in uh, now casting, we did have this period where we had slower computers and especially not centrally available radar data. Uh, LAPS had a really key role, and actually that was part of the purpose for LAPS at that point, uh, because the LAPS could use the local radar data, and it just wasn't available elsewhere. Uh, the initial uh, information and discussions in RTMA really started 12 years ago. We had a workshop uh, uh, from that next month. And then what's taken place since then, MRMS really was a key aspect in changing the world here and providing 3D radar reflectivity. We had faster computers. And then it was really out of that that the hourly HER started to be able to come into play with the 3D uh, reflectivity data. Uh, RTMA continued to improve. LAPS has actually been serving in the uh, FOs. And then it's really been over the last three years that we've had initial discussions and how we could do this in a three-dimensional way. At the same time, we've had uh, GSI has been getting better and better. We've been able to use it pretty effectively down to three kilometer and even finer, even down to uh, 750 meter, uh, and be able to treat this radar and the satellite data with that. So really, it set the stage for this development uh, to go onward here toward 3D now casting, and that's what we're going to talk about here. So I guess to go the what, it's really some, it's a unification of the now casting within the RUA. These are some nominal requirements that we talked about, getting something down at least to start over CONUS with a one to three kilometer updating of the temperature and winds three-dimensionally. But really, this is actually a key thing in our workshop a year ago to talk about water in all forms, to be able to have updated information in that, really to include the land surface field also as much as we could uh, in an integrated way, including uh, soil and snow conditions even, to have a contrib contribution toward a QPE in which we merge radar, and it looks like I had some other things here, but obviously with uh, background field, even eventually to have uh, aerosol smoke constituents in that, and then to use a very high resolution model background would be a key part of how to unify uh, this. And the idea here is not to do these analyses of cloud cover and PBL height and so on, uh, but really to get the best possible 3D estimate, and then we could diagnose these in an integrated way from this RUA. So we had this workshop a year ago, uh, and we had 60 participants, uh, really from that uh, list of folks. Many of you were there, uh, and which was great. Uh, and we uh, recognized we had these different user groups, uh, and maybe severe weather ought to be broadened into general weather applications, but the specific areas in aviation, hydrology, energy. And so uh, we, we came out of that with sort of a proposal or an idea we could have a four-year development plan that took place thinking, you know, uh, 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 EMC and uh, GSD to take a key role in that, but working with this user community of which you are a part, try to get something in operations here uh, by 2017. This is our hope for at the time. You know, it's we don't quite have a funding to accelerate this. I'll come back to this at the end. But again, our goal here is to get our best single estimate of the convective scale 4D data set here, uh, even uh, going through the land surface, uh, smoke, uh, eventually to have this uh, across the past and the present, uh, and then uh, with applications for this diverse community that all care about high impact uh, weather and information. So, uh, and then to unify all these uh, now casting efforts within NOAA. So the requirements we talked about a year ago, let's start with CONUS, let's uh, uh, move toward OCONUS, and then later with uh, a global uh, RUA as resources permit uh, to try for a three kilometer spatial good initially, but move toward one kilometer, uh, and uh, even move toward five minute latency in that uh, all season application, certainly physical consistency that we would get from a model background like the HER, uh, and then to be able to have these fields to meet needs of these different groupings. So uh, uh, our outcomes then, we this is what kind of came out of that uh, in, in our proposal to have this improved 3D situation awareness uh, for uh, real time uh, for your pure now cast or basis for extrapolation, but also to have the best uh, analysis on record for reanalysis applications. Uh, again, a unification of 
our 2D RTMA, even the MRMS, some of the extra uh, kind of merged grids that they try for here, the SBC hourly, mesoscale analyses, and the no-risk fields. There's been some ties already between uh, OPSI, you know, the RAP and the HER, and the uh, NAM go into this uh, right now. The uh, RAP actually is a background field for the no-risk uh, snow analysis, but we could integrate these in a better way. So obviously we could also have a side effort or a side benefit of improving short-range NWP forecast and accuracy because we're going to learn more about how to do the simulation on this in a pure nowcast mode, which eventually will help out with the HER, HREF, Warnon forecast. So uh, we had this kind of uh, set of all these now casting efforts that uh, have been out there in the past and a recognition that we could put all this together in the REA. So again, I'm kind of blathering the same idea over and over again here. So let's keep moving on. How would we get there? Well, we think that the HER is, is a key opportunity. We have this hourly updating and even actually down to a 15 minute interval. As I'll show you here, uh, we have improved versions of the HER coming in and really a larger community uh, in trying to improve our overall storm scale, uh, high frequency data simulation and short range forecasting. So that really is part of our capability. Uh, the uh, RAP3 in the HER2 background actually uh, brings in this information from the RAP every hour, but actually now is using this 15 minute spin up uh, with reflectivity brought in every 15 minutes. Uh, the cloud data from the satellite is not being used at NCEP yet, but that will be in the near future. So we're kind of getting close to having 15 minute frequency uh, uh, analysis backgrounds that are available. And so that is part of our uh, capability and how we could get there uh, to be able to have this information available in a background field for an RUA. Uh, in the RAP and the HER, we have these data sets that are uh, being brought in. The MRMS is, is absolutely critical here. That really is the uh, background in the uh, reflectivity information that goes in. Uh, uh, the radar, radio wind data actually I think right now is being kind of regenerated from all the individual radars. Uh, the lightning data, but we have an opportunity here to use many of these data sets in a much finer resolution, even what we're doing in the HER initialization here right now. So uh, I think you guys have seen this before. You know, in the background for the HER, we use this latent heating specification to be able to get divergence that uh, really gives the HER a chance to have this uh, continuity uh, being extended onto the future uh, with retention of the current radar information. At the same time, we also have this mapping that takes place using the GO satellite data uh, from above, the radar data also, and even the coelometer data from the METARs to be able to then take a background field and adjust the top, uh, even to carve out completely in uh, clear areas to be able to build and to take a background field like this one. This is a vertical cross section here. And I think you guys have all seen this before. But the idea is we could take this same capability, and this is what we're really starting toward already, and to be able to uh, apply this in a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis, whatever we can actually resolve in the model, not in the model, excuse me, in the radar and satellite data sets, let's put it in, in that resolution so that we have fidelity to the observations and not in the RUA to have to have this requirement of having to also initialize a model. So we want to have this situational awareness that is close as possible to that. So uh, this is kind of another simplified picture here. We've got the cloud top pressure from uh, GOES to be able to know where we have the satellite information, the radar information coming in, sea lometer data to put that in together with the background field. Uh, so uh, this is kind of giving some idea of how we're doing the radar and the uh, cloud analysis, but in this initial setup that we have at uh, GSD for his call it proto, a proto RUA, we actually uh, don't have these kind of dependencies on how we use the radar information or the cloud information. We just do a full build and clear clearing of the information without regarding uh, uh, how well it's going to uh, play into, you know, one, two, three hour forecast. So 
so that I think is an important aspect. That's what's been done in the past with uh, certainly the RTMA. So this is an example here. It's actually a few years old, so it's kind of a lousy uh, her one hour forecast, but you can get the idea. And this actually is applying the radar data in a RUA kind of setup here. So it's converted into the cloud hydro meteors three dimensionally. And then we come back out of that at the other end, re-diagnose the reflectivity from the uh, 3D hydrometeor data, including hail if needed, and then to be able to get something that is really a pretty good representation down to, well down to the sub-county grid level in fidelity. But this actually came out of a 3D, uh, three-dimensional uh, HER analysis applied with these RUA uh, cloud uh, extensions in using kind of the highest fidelity possible. This is a, kind of a lousier example, but it sure is an example. This is a, looking at a vertical cross section here. This is right before our RUA meeting last year. And so uh, we have these cross sections that are already being generated from the HER right now for a few selected cities across the country. If you hadn't noticed that before, they're sort of interesting. You can see uh, how they evolve in the future. But this is actually looking at this cross section kind of around across uh, Dulles here. And uh, so this is at the zero hour where we were uh, drawing in with uh, fairly high resolution, I almost not quite the full RUA, but then comparing that with a vertical cross section from the MRMS. In this case, there's low cloud that's also involved here. And so the HER knows about that. It has the seelometer data, excuse me, that's uh, playing into that as well. But uh, reasonably good fidelity, this can be improved a lot here. So combining the information from all the different data sets, including with the MRMS data, to be able to have a better three-dimensional area. This is the same slide I again showed before, but the idea is being able to bring in a model background here. Actually, I don't have the model background, but I do have the result of bringing in the latest MRMS data, drawing to it with the satellite data, providing quality uh, control, and even carving out and getting rid of the one-hour HER forecast where we don't really have uh, radar or seelometer data to be able to get our best depiction of the uh, reflectivity field. And this is based, again, on a three-dimensional uh, hydrometeor field. So uh, I'm getting here within about seven slides at the end just to be able to say that the HER itself is getting better. We've had issues and biases uh, in the afternoon for uh, essentially looking at uh, valid time here, especially in the afternoon and with lead time. This is with the HER V1, what's operational now. With the new version that's uh, running uh, experimentally at NCEP now, uh, that re uh, bias is really reduced a lot. So again, red is a, a moist bias here, and the blue would be a dry bias. So a big pickup there. Uh, we've also been looking at the reflectivity uh, forecast here actually over the last six years now, and I see a steady improvement in critical success index uh, certainly at the zero in one hour, which would be the critical aspect for the RUA, but also in forecasts. And also reduction in bias showing up here. Again, this is looking at uh, 20 dBZ here, uh, uh, averaged out to 20 kilometers. So that also will help out the uh, background information for the RUA. We've also been looking at the uh, sort of a QPE and an integrated uh, product here uh, in the HER six-hour forecast integrated over actually uh, the full one-year periods. But again, an idea to start to evaluate how does this look like uh, stage four precipitation. So this is actually what we had back in 2013 with definitely a high bias showing up here in the eastern U.S. and then uh, comparing that to 2015. So there's some moist bias there, but a great reduction. We think that this is going to look better still in 2016. And again, this has a role in our uh, believability and being able to use this uh, for an RUA QPE extension, hope it would be good, or at least not a bad start over the western U.S., northern Mexico, and these other data uh, sparse regions. Uh, the intent, as we talked about in the workshop, was also to try to apply to the land surface fields here. So this is actually looking at the uh, cycled snow water equivalent here uh, over a 10-day period earlier in January. And so there's actually a trimming and building using the NESDA snow analysis here. There's actually been a probably a over 12-year uh, relationship with uh, 
no risk in what is now the National Water Center and providing background field for them. So uh, we think that that uh, RUA effort could be convolved with the National Water Center. Uh, there is uh, a building and uh, I, I'll just go ahead. There's building and trimming based on the satellite information. There also have been initial experiments in providing her precipitation and runoff data to the National Water Model. And so we've been working with uh, uh, NCAR and also with Brian Cosgrove and his colleagues on that area. So again, this is closer to the kind of application you'd want to be able to have for the RUA. And I think now I'm going to try to uh, advance to the next to last slide, which is just uh, to say that uh, the RTMA is still out there, and you'll hear more about some in pretty important improvements near term from Jeff Domingo. And so uh, the uh, HER does have this 50-minute output, which allows uh, uh, an experimental 50-minute uh, RTMA. And so we've been doing some experiments with that, help with Manuel Pondeca at NSEP with Craig Hartsall in our group to work in that area. So. Uh, when might this happen? Well, uh, we had this proposal here to try to get an experimental version, possibly in 2017. I think it would be better to say to have an experimental version by next year. Uh, but we did put together uh, a proposal through OAR and the Weather Service to uh, accelerate this uh, development work uh, with uh, EMC and GSD especially, but working with all the other groups in that uh, lead slide and then to try to have an improved version with 2019. So there's question marks in both these areas, but these are some ideas of what uh, might happen here toward the RUA. We know that the RUA is going to be our logical extension of the RTMA. So I stop there, Amy, and